college recruiting process is so fragile. Many student athletes and parents don't understand this. They think they have all the time in the world to sit back and wait. And what I have seen is those who sit back and wait and don't be proactive in the recruiting process, they end up not getting recruited at all. Or they may end up getting a college program beneath their athletic ability. I've seen it happen a million and one times. You only get one chance to go from high school athlete to college athlete. One chance. You don't get a second chance or a third chance like in anything else in life. Like if you were uh, working somewhere and you left that job to get a second job or you left that job to get a new job or you left that new job to get another job somewhere down the line. I mean, how many times have, have you changed jobs in your career? You may change three or four times, maybe, or you're lucky enough to get one good job. You know, but most people are going to change jobs more than once. So they're getting a second chance. But in the world of high school athletics to college athletics, it's one chance. You got your high school career, which starts in the ninth grade, ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th, and that's it. You don't get a 13th and 14th year. There, there, it doesn't exist. So if you don't get it right, if you don't get it right, in those four years of high school, if you don't get it right athletically, if you don't get it right academically, there is not going to be a second chance. So what happens a lot of times is that student athletes and parents try to create a second chance or a third chance, and they end up, and they end up playing college recruiting musical chairs where they will transfer out of their high school, maybe to a prep school. They'll transfer to uh, a high school to another high school, thinking that they're going to get exposure and that's going to in uh, increase the likelihood they get recruited. It doesn't. Then they'll, they'll maybe go to a prep school, thinking they're going to help, help them get D1 looks. It doesn't always happen that way. You could go to junior college and do that. But they'll go to prep school and pay an arm and a leg for Division I. They're trying to buy a Division I scholarship. You can't buy it. If you could buy it, every, all the rich kids would be holding Division I scholarships. All the affluent families would be holding D1 scholarships. It don't work that way. It, it, how it works is if you have talent and if you have good grades, period, end of story, talent, are you good enough and do you have good enough grades to be admitted into that college? If you don't score very highly in those two categories, you're not going D1. You will fall to Division Two, depending on the sport. Let's say it's basketball, then you're going to drop to D2 NAIA, and that's for those who are really good players but don't have the grades. But it's tough at that level, too. You may drop all the way to, to nothing. You may drop all the way out the game. You get one chance at this, people. One chance. And so there's some things you can do to increase your chances of getting recruited for college. Number one, for every hour you put into developing your athletic talent, one hour needs to be put into academics. So if you're practicing two hours a day, when you get home from school and practice for the day, you need to be in those books for two hours. Put the phone down, put the remote, remote control down, leave your friends alone for a couple of hours, and study. Two hours. Then you can get back on your phone and text your friends and be on Facebook and Instagram and all of that. But you got to put in your work. 
You're going to work on your game. You're going to be in the weight room. You're going to be shooting a thousand shots, hitting a thousand balls with the baseball bat, the softball bat. So why not hit the books? If you do all of those things, but you got to have talent, you got to have size, you got to be good. I'm not saying if you do those things that it's going to totally happen for you because you could be five foot nine thinking you're going to play point guard at Ohio State. It's not going to happen. But if you have the talent, the real talent, and you work your butt off, athletically and academically, you have a real shot at Ohio State or some other big time major program. You have a real legitimate shot. But there's so many stars who have scars. It's brutal. This recruiting game is brutal. It has messed up a lot of people because they got the wrong advice. They're sitting around talking to parents who also have the wrong advice. And they're all, they're like a dog chasing their tail. They believe recruiting should go this way and really the information they're getting is totally false. And so they're running around in circles, not exactly knowing which strategies they should pursue, and they end up going nowhere or to a college program beneath their athletic ability. It happens so many times. It's crazy. When you use up your college recruiting chance, and it's only one, that's it. You get no more. You don't get to do it over again. It's done. College coaches are going to move on to other players. I have, in my career, talked to so many student athletes who had all the talent in the world. All of it. But they didn't have any grades. They did not apply themselves. It wasn't that they were dumb. They just didn't apply themselves that way. And it even gets worse, believe it or not. It gets worse. There are some who believe they didn't have to take the standardized tests because they had a 4.0 GPA. So this is kind of the situation where the misinformation is getting out there and where student athletes and their parents are making horrible decisions. What you got to do is work on your game. You have to improve every year from ninth grade year to 10th grade year. Are you better? Are you different? 10th grade year to 11th grade year. Are you better? Are you different? 11th grade year that summer, that's it. Are you better? Are you different? Because by senior year, it's over. They're gonna recruit you, they've been recruiting you, they're ready to sign you. But if you haven't improved, you've got nothing. Hire a personal trainer. In my day, which was a long time ago, we didn't have personal trainers. Now, it's so scientific now, and it's so critical, and these scholarships are, are like gold bricks. Hire a personal trainer so you can get better. Hire a tutor if you need to, to get better in the classroom. Hire a tutor to help you with the standardized tests. That's critical. Don't be scared of the test. Embrace it. Study it in your 10th grade year. Just get some books and start reading it. And reading it every day. And studying it. And study and study and study. You're spending a whole lot of downtime in the summer months traveling on your travel team, right? You're on a bus. You're on a plane. You're in a car. You're traveling. Take that book with you and study, man. Study. And then when it's time to take the practice test, take it. Score high. 
confidence is now strong. Then when you're ready to take it for the first time, you are confident. You are strong. You are going to do really well. Do it. And now you've got good results. If you got to take it a second time or a third time or a fourth time, do it. Yeah, it costs money. But you're trying to get a scholarship. There's a lot of people who don't get it, who don't get the scholarship, and guess what? They end up working at the fast food line at McDonald's. Can I help you? Do you want fries with that shake? Don't let that be you. Don't let it happen. Work hard on your athletic ability. Work hard in the classroom. Be the best that you can be every single day. Because the bottom line is, and this is the truth, you only get one chance to go from high school athlete to college athlete. Thanks for listening. This is Al Woods, Woods Recruiting.